Miami neophyte. Yes. I am completely new. I just learned about Little Haiti. Yes. Now I've, I've come to find out that there's another neighborhood called Little River. Yes, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's precisely it. So I'm still trying to navigate what it means to be considered or how I can get my badge of honor yep. uh, as a Miami local. Understanding the neighborhoods is such an important part of just like knowing beyond what everybody thinks Miami is. Right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly. Welcome to About the Journey. I'm your host, Onika Raymond, a travel journalist and member of Marriott Bonvoy. This season, I'm uncovering the lesser known sides of six iconic cities. In my years of travel, I found there is no better way to see a city than through its neighborhoods and the people who call them home. So I'll be meeting up with in the know locals to show me what makes their homes one of a kind, from the sights, sounds, and flavors to the hidden gems and so much more. This week, we're in Miami, Florida, exploring beyond the beaches and learning about the Latin music scene. I love Little River. There's so much culture, so much innovation happening in such a, like, a small part of the city. It's so much of Miami is like, ask the questions, right? And then the thing leads you to another breadcrumb to give you a deeper, richer understanding of your experience with it. I recently made Miami my home base. And while I'm loving it so far, I'm still learning about the city and how to make it my own. So for this episode, we're doing something a little different. Rather than sticking to just one neighborhood, I'm going to get to know a few by diving into the world of Miami music. And I'm going to do it with the help of local entrepreneur, Isabella Acker. I'm Izzy. I've been in the music scene for the last decade here in Miami, a transplant from Atlanta. It took me some time to find my space, my community, like what Miami meant and is for me. And I found it in the music scene. Isabella, or Izzy for short, is the founder of Tigre Sounds, a music discovery platform with a focus on Latin artists. She's deeply passionate about showing visitors the parts of Miami that they might not otherwise stumble upon. And she does so through hosting live music events in lesser known neighborhoods and venues across the city. To me, like, it's really not about putting up one artist and blowing them up. It's about our whole scene, right? And so you have to work with the local community, with the, the local record store, with the promoter. To be able to really create something that's bigger than you, you have to work in community. And I've, I've just always been very passionate about it. That's the truth. We met up at Sweat Records in Little Haiti, a neighborhood five miles north of downtown. It's on the mainland, across the bay from Miami Beach. You can't miss the indie record store on Northeast 2nd Avenue. Its exterior is adorned by the Wall of Idolatry, a larger-than-life mural depicting portraits of musicians in various hues of purple. So Sweat Records, it's just been such a mecca of the music scene. You know, I feel like when you want to go to cities and understand what's going on musically, culturally, going to a record store really has a, a deeper and richer connection to the city. There's two words that you've mentioned that really stick out to me. Yeah. Okay. And those two words are culture and connection. Yep. And geographically, we're actually in the neighborhood of Little Haiti. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's probably the fundamental issue when it comes to Miami in general, yeah. is that you don't hear about neighborhoods like Little Haiti with consistency, not right. in the same way that people are going to talk about South Beach. I think it's because you have to choose to venture out, right? You're not going to see the big red buses here that go to Little Havana and go to Wynwood. So you have to really do your research and kind of understand, like, what does 24 hours in this neighborhood look like to me? This podcast about the journey um, is obviously about people's journeys, sure. but also the neighborhoods and the spaces that they find themselves in that shape these journeys. Yeah, so I was actually going to say a lot of locals and visitors don't really know where the corridors begin and end with Little Haiti, Little River, and Mimo. But everything is five, ten minutes away from each other. It has really become such a hub for creative entrepreneurs. Izzy offers to take me on a short driving tour of this creative hub set back from the bay. We climb into her car, blast the AC, and drive up Northeast 2nd Avenue, Little Haiti's main corridor, as Izzy points out mainstays of the neighborhood. You'll find the Little Haiti cultural complex, the Caribbean marketplace, Chef Creole, Chez La Bebe, and the BNM market, some of the best spots in the neighborhood. Influenced by the Haitian diaspora since the mid-20th century, the buildings are unique here. 
They're painted in bright colors and finished with ornamental lace-like trim. So tell me about Little River then. So Little River is part of Little Haiti? Um, so it's- no, it's, it's different areas. Little Haiti, it takes you all the way up to the 71st Street approximately, and you go up to Northwest 2nd Ave where you'll find the main corridor to Little River. So something I find really interesting as we're driving through these streets, I would not know I was in Miami. Right. There are very few palm trees, first of all. Yeah. I don't see any water. Yep. And the buildings look quite industrial. Yeah. They have, you know, flex-use space and different warehouses, multi-use. There's co-working, there's, you know, art galleries, and I think that's exactly why it's kind of had this burgeoning opportunity for creativity. And that was the bright line that just passed. Yeah. A high-speed train from Miami, Palm Beaches, and Orlando. Hmm. Little River is Izzy's go-to neighborhood for building opportunity and community. Between its welcoming energy and more spacious layout, there's room to grow. You know, I think as a local, Miami can feel very hectic. You're just natural day to day, so it feels nice to be in a more neighborhood-centric place that you can feel like you're a little more at home. Little River is where she launched Tigre Sounds and where new venues are supporting live music and opportunities to gather. A recent venue that's opened in the last few years, it's called Understory. They have an amazing monthly called The Rhythm Portal a production from El Centro Cultural del Conex from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. I would recommend it to anybody that's looking to do something a little more off the beaten path. Um, There's a cool kind of motorcycle community hub called Helmet One, where they've been doing DJ sets, acoustic sessions. I would also say Little River hosts some really cool events like the Little River Fleet, and you can always just expect some good vibes, good tunes, and meet some good people. We leave Little River and venture toward Biscayne Boulevard. So now we're going to be coming into the MIMO district, the Miami modern architecture neighborhood. While Miami Beach is known for its colorful pre-war Art Deco buildings, Miami Modern is all about curved walls, modern angles, and geometric patterns. The more you look for the style, the more you see it. The same can be said for restaurants as we drive up Biscayne Boulevard. I love the Uptown 66 Taqueria, really yummy Mexican. The Farmer's Market happens here at the Upper Legion's Farmer's Market. Very cool. On Saturdays, and they do a really (gasps) wonderful yoga class. I think I've been Yeah, you have? Okay. Yes. There's just a little bit of everything. Mm. One of my favorite Italian restaurants and empanadas because they're Argentine, Italian. Mm. I mean, I would be so bold to say the best empanadas in Miami. It's a family-owned restaurant. It's called Luna Pasta y Dolce. That is good to know. Exactly. Just as Izzy had promised, our driving tour is complete in 15 minutes and ends just in time for a quick coffee break. Izzy's brought me to Caracas Bakery in Maimo, one of the go-to lunch spots during the work week. And Caracas, obviously, is... Venezuela. Venezuela, the capital of Venezuela. Yeah. So is there, is there like Latin inspired? Yeah, I mean, they have a fusion, but um, yeah, they, they make everything in house and it's like a really amazing, delicious, local joy. Mm, can't wait. Caracas offers French pastries with a Venezuelan twist. Owned by a father son team, the family relocated from Venezuela to South Florida in 2014. Their version of the cachito, a ham and cheese stuffed pastry, is not to be missed. So, one of the things that I noticed when we were driving up here is how multicultural yeah. it is. You pointed out Venezuelan, Greek, Argentinian, yes. Vietnamese. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of different cultures represented here. And to that point, Caracas is actually a Venezuelan French bakery. So I guess my question to you is, why is it important to you to support these sorts of Ventures. I mean, to me, this is such a fabric of what is Miami, right? You support with your dollar, you know? And so I think supporting local is a really important part of picking the kind of experience you want to have in your city. As an entrepreneur, Izzy is committed to doing her part to build experiences beyond the beach that both locals and visitors can enjoy. How she talks about supporting local restaurants like Caracas Bakery is exactly how she talks about supporting emerging Latin musicians here. And in this way, Izzy is helping to expand people's perception of what Miami has to offer. 
It's a vision of the city that she shared with me back at Sweat Records. You know, Miami has this this appeal and this charm that you're drawn in. I think originally I came for school. I decided to stay because I saw Miami to be really entrepreneurial. And I'm also, you know, a citizen of the world. I grew up in a household speaking Spanish. And I feel like with Miami, because a lot of people, that second generation, so many, you know, transplants. And it felt to me... That's my story now. And I felt really identified with that. And that's something that we share as well, because I've lived a number of different places in the world. I was born and raised in Toronto, Canada. I am of Jamaican heritage. I've been in all these different places, but something about being in Miami, yeah. particularly as someone with Caribbean roots. Yeah, of course. It hits different. I'm sure it does. If I go somewhere and, and they have rice and beans. Yeah. Hey, yeah, culturally fluent. I get it. I does get everybody it. speak to you in Spanish? Too? Everybody speaks to me in Spanish. Yeah, that's right. And I am so here for it. And being able to to exist here, particularly as a person of color, and not be an anomaly. Yeah, absolutely. It feels really, really good. So tell me a little bit more about how Miami has become home for you. If you're part of creating the version of what you want to see, which for me has been live music, I feel like I have ownership and I get to say that I, uh, you know, a small seed of a legacy of what I've left in Miami in a way that feels fulfilling. I think when I moved from Atlanta, you know, I was asking all the questions, but yet, you know, people still weren't venturing out. And I was like, what's up with the music scene here? Like, where do people see bands and what kind of bands? And realized there was an issue really being able to create spaces of listening. It wasn't that people didn't want it. That if I, you don't know, exactly, you don't know. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, Miami is in a constant state of building. Right. How would you describe Miami's Latin scene today, the music scene? Well, you know, the Latin music scene is so many versions, right? Because you have this global movement of what's happening with reggaeton and the music that's being produced here is being heard around the world at such a global scale, which is amazing for representation in the genre itself. I also think there's a massive opportunity to talk about all the other versions of Latin. People only think about one genre, but there's like hundreds yeah. of Latin, It's right? a very monolithic view exactly. that we have. Exactly, which I love to like talk about because even with salsa, salsa, there's the Cuban version of salsa, there's the Venezuelan version, there's the Colombian, these nuances that you wouldn't really know unless you're tapped in. So I think Miami has all these sub genres, but I would say the Miami sound has been the Afro-Cuban funk. Mm. And it's been the stuff I've actually been the most passionate about. Miami is melting pot fusion of diversity, yeah. and so you feel musically that transmits in a set. It's important to create, I think, bridges of connection. Mm. I think that's what brings people together in a way that like the music speaks for itself. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's really important to think about the, the diaspora and yeah. think about how wide-ranging it yeah. is. There are live music venues spread out across Miami, from the Miami Beach Bandshell in North Beach, to Gramps in Wynwood, to Understory, which Izzy pointed out in Little River. But Izzy notes that because Miami is a city that's long been driven by special events, it can be challenging for travelers to navigate what's happening weekly. As an outsider, I think to myself, oh my goodness, I could get dropped off in Little Havana, and there are a number of venues at two in the afternoon right. where I could experience live music for free. Sure. So why, why would you say that? So, yes, that's true. I'll also say, and listen, I love Little Havana. I love Latin, Cuban, salsa music. Ball and Chain, which is a... Love little, it. Exactly. I've danced. I've yes. danced there with the, with you wouldn't the be You wouldn't be a local if you hadn't been there yet. <laughs> you have to see it. You have to experience it. But the truth is that is just like one representation of it, right? There's so much, mm. so much music. It's not that people are not interested in supporting live music. There's an issue with information. You know, Miami's been built around Festivals. these- Festivals. Exactly, it's been built around these January, key times. January, February. Right, yeah. Art Basel, Miami Swim Week, these great things that bring, I, I would say, thousands of people to our city. But to very commercialized Exa venues. Exactly. And I bet you all those people would love to know yeah. where the local music scene lives, right? And it is dispersed. But there is absolutely, I would say, like a need and a love for supporting local. And so, you know, Miami can be really cyclical, but I think information is key. And this is so important, right, to put culture on the map in a way that people can support and understand because when you know better, you do better. Yeah, totally. And I think Izzy is raising awareness for Latin music in Miami and beyond through Tigre Sounds, which she started at the beginning of the pandemic. 
over time, she began hosting live Tigre sessions in her Little River studio to give artists an opportunity to perform and be in community together. And there's a beautiful 75-minute show of an artist presenting their work, and they're either with their own band or we create the band for them. Wow. And they only have one day of rehearsal. They pull it off, we record it, and we publish it on our label. So. Wow. You know, it sounds as though you're really intentional. To bottle up the magic that Izzy cultivates in her live Tigre sessions, she started a record label called Tigre Den. It allows the performances to live on and for Miami music to be distributed far and wide. You'll remember having been in that room, you know, and you'll remember like, oh, I was there for that. And I think there's something about live recordings that capture the memory. It's like the scent, right, of of when you were there. It's so powerful. Tigre Sessions is one of those platforms that allows for local people in Miami to really experience the global sounds of the present and the future. A live Tigre session is intimate and crowded. It is vulnerable but it's a party. You could hear a pin drop, but you could not hear the person next to you. This is a Tigre Den recording of local DJ and singer Maluska performing her debut single, Loba, marking the launch of her solo career as a performer. In part, it was Izzy's mentorship that made a singing career feel possible for Maluska. The same can be said for Izzy's vision for more supportive, intimate spaces for live music in Miami. I really have to have to believe and look at Miami in its infancy. And so when you see that like wonderful things are happening, I try to champion it, I try to talk about it, I try to attend, I try to go to it, because if not, they don't exist, right? And they close and they don't happen. From what I hear, a little birdie told me that you are in a season of expansion, and we love that for you. So basically, I've heard that a new Tigre Studios location yes. is in the works in Little River. Yeah. Little River has really become and been my home as, as a business owner for the last decade. It's something that feels uh, very authentic to my own personal journey, but also all the people who have supported us, who've come you know, to our events, who've come to our sessions. And it only makes sense for us to really plant our own flag and our home base for our permanent studios to be in the area. We're just excited to continue being part of the identity of the neighborhood. Feel very grateful to be a part of that story. I think that the music scene is a really integral part of being here. It creates a vibe, and I think it's always easier to meet people, particularly local people, when they're relaxed and they're enjoying themselves. And I love that Izzy is creating and curating experiences that are more accessible in a more intimate setting and one that breeds creativity and connection. Driving around with Izzy really gave me some solid insights on my new home. It allowed me to see how big the city actually is. And quite frankly, the more I explore, the more I I get to love it. That's all for this episode of About the Journey. Thank you to our Miami guide, Isabella Acker. Next week, we're headed to Chicago's Brownsville neighborhood to learn about the history of the Black metropolis. I think the name in and of itself, Bronzeville, calls for inquisition, right? You know, you've heard about Chicago, you heard about the Bean, you know, maybe you're not familiar with Bronzeville. And so it's like, what's that? About the Journey is produced by Marriott Bonvoy Traveler, Atwill Media, and me, Onika Raymond. Our Marriott producers are Robin Benefield and Valerie Connors. Our Atwill Media producers are Kate Walsh, Christy Westgard, Gail Straub, and Elliot Davis. Mixing and original theme music by Andrew Holtzberger. Learn more about Tigre Studios by following at Tigre Studios on Instagram. Thank you to Tigre Den for providing music for this episode by Maluska. You can learn more about visiting Miami and how to travel more meaningfully from Marriott Bonvoy Traveler at traveler.marriott.com. Stay, explore, and discover the unexpected with Marriott Bonvoy's 30-plus hotel brands with over 8,000 hotels in cities around the world. And if you like this episode of About the Journey, please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. 
I'm your host, Onika Raymond. See you next time. 